Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Certified Educator Program's second live webinar session, Getting Started with CK12 Adaptive Practice and Assignments. I'm Katie, one of the CEP Program Managers, and my colleague Lindsay and I will be running today's webinar. We are thrilled to have so many participants from all around the world joining us on our second day of the live sessions for the CK12 Certified Educator Program. Once we get a few days into the program, we'll be able to get to the core webinar content right away, but since this is just the first day, we do want to remind you of some programming details that will help set you up for success this summer. If you are looking to join the ranks of CK12 Certified Educators, here's how you will do it. You need to watch two mandatory on-demand sessions. We launched the first on-demand session that was called Certified Educator Program and CK12 Overview this past Sunday on July 1st. If you have not had a chance to watch those sessions yet, that's okay, but please do make it a priority since it sets you up for success for this program. And it should help answer any questions you have about the Certified Educator Program and about navigating CK12. The second on-demand session is called Beyond the CK12 Certified Educator Program, and that will be available to view at the conclusion of the live sessions here in a few weeks. You're gonna have until July 31st to watch it, and then our whole program wraps up by the end of the month. So after the on-demand sessions, you also need to join us for five or more live sessions, like the one that you guys are on today. You can choose between different times offered and content covered. If you need to register for more sessions, you can do so at any time at ck12.org register or within our Google Classroom. You'll need to complete the accompanying assignments to go with all sessions, and we'll be talking about that in more detail later on. And then lastly, you'll complete a final form to request your certification, and then you'll be CK12 certified. Google is a partner of the CK12 Foundation, and we're using a Google class to organize all of the materials and assignments for this program. You should have received several emails from us about accessing our Google class. If you did not receive the emails, we've had some users report to us that our emails have hit their spam folder. So please check there first and uh, make sure you're getting our emails. Your email has a join code that you need to access the class. If you have not joined yet, we hope you'll be able to do so soon, because like I said, that's where you're gonna find our first on-demand session that includes five short videos to get you started with the CK12 program, and you'll need to watch those and complete the matching assignment as soon as you can. At the end of today's webinar, after we've covered all of our core content, we're gonna stay on and answer any questions you might have regarding Google Classroom. We'll talk about the join code, we'll do a little walkthrough of how to find resources, so we'll do all that at the end today. But right now, we do wanna get going with today's hot topic, which is adaptive practice and assignments. We have created a handy resource page for each of our sessions this summer. You can find those within our Google class, and we're also gonna put the link for today's resource in the chat window right now, if any of you wanna pull that up right, right now. You're welcome to print these resource pages before a session begins if it helps you to follow along, or you can just save it as a reference for later on when you're working on assignments or using adaptive practice during the school year. We hope you'll find these resource pages to be a great addition to the program. Now let's make sure everyone is getting comfortable with the Zoom webinar platform. We're just gonna do this for the first day or so just to make sure everyone is up and running. You should see two different options on your Zoom screen, one for Q&A and one for chat. During today's presentation, whenever you have a question about CK12, please post it in the Q&A window. This helps, helps us track which ones we've answered and which we still need to address. The chat window is a place for community conversation. We'd love for you all to introduce yourselves. If you're an educator, feel free to share where you live and the subject you teach. Just make sure in the chat window that you're sending any general posts to all panelists and attendees and not just CK12 or the panelists. While we don't anticipate any technical issues, if you're having trouble with your video or your sound, please let us know in Q&A or the chat window. So with that, let's get started with today's content. In this webinar, we'll be covering the following topics. CK12's adaptive practice system, the intelligent system with 150,000 plus questions, which adapts to students by challenging them with harder questions or recommending resources. CK12 classes, creating and managing classes, along with features such as sharing content, hosting discussions, 
making assignments, and more. And finally, assignments and student progress, assigning practice and other modalities, and seeing student work, including answers, levels, and time spent through CK12 classes. Our main goal is that by the end of this session, you understand how our adaptive practice system works, you can assign practice and other, other modalities to your classes, and you can monitor student progress. I'd like to launch a poll right now to find out a little bit more about your experience with adaptive practice and what your plans are for the future. So you'll see two questions. The first question asks how familiar you are with our practice tool. So please let us know if you are new to adaptive practice, if you use CK tools practice occasionally, or you use it frequently. For the second question, you're going to select all of the answers that apply. We'd like to know which, if any, sorry, let me rephrase that, one of those answers that apply. So if any of the following assignments that you're gonna send either through CK12 or your learning management system. I'm gonna pause for a few seconds to let you finish answering this poll. So we're almost done. Let's give you another few seconds just to finish answering. Once again, the next second question, you're just picking which one you plan to use. If you don't know what you're gonna use yet to assign work, feel free to choose that last I'm not sure option. And I think with that, let's end that poll and share the results. So it looks like a significant portion of you are new to CK12's adaptive practice, so that's great. You guys are in the right session. We're gonna cover that and fill that out. Um, and then some of you have used or started to even customize practice as you worked your way through. So hopefully this will build some extra refresher pieces, tell you some other parts here and there, um, and then definitely join us for our next customizing session as well. For the second part, it looks like a significant portion of you guys are planning on using Google Classroom. Um, and some are definitely planning on using CK12, classes and others kind of another learning management system or you're not really sure. Um, and so I think with that, we're going to talk about just kind of as we go through, note that if you're using a learning management system, you do not need to set up a separate class in CK12. So as we go through this whole process and we talk about managing CK12 classes, the assignments and the content that we're talking about will still be relevant for you. But just keep in mind that if you already have a Google class or you have a class set up in Canvas or Schoology, then the CK12 class piece, kind of how that works specifically and technically, is less relevant for you because you're going to want to keep all of your content within the learning management system that you're currently using. Okay, thanks, Katie. Um, that information is definitely helpful as we get going with this webinar. Um, let's talk about what you're going to be able to do by the end of this session. You will be able to find appropriate practice for various concepts. Assign practice, reads, interactives, and other modalities to your CK12 classes. Create a new CK12 class and make changes to any existing classes. Find detailed per question feedback on students and quickly see the number of students in a class that have completed an assignment. For those of you who will be taking customizing CK12 practice and assignments, here are the types of things that we're gonna cover in that more advanced session. Customizing practice into quizzes, all the different settings for quizzes, adding concepts to a quiz, selecting and recording quiz or questions in a quiz, creating new questions, using CK12's math editor, creating multi-concept assignments, and student reports to multi-part assignments and quizzes. So if you're wanting any additional help with any of these more advanced skills right now, or like Katie was saying, with an integration with learning management systems like Google Classroom or Canvas or Schoology, please be aware that this Getting Started webinar focuses on the basics, and we're gonna prioritize questions related to the basics during this webinar. But don't worry, we're gonna stay on at the end to address your more complex questions, and then we do have these exciting webinar sessions upcoming the next few weeks that, um, that are hopefully gonna interest you. So with that, let's move into a CK12's adaptive practice. So first of all, what is adaptive practice? 
CK-12's adaptive practice system is a digital tool designed to meet students at their current level of understanding and help them master the next step for any concept. Because of that, our system will bump students up to available harder questions if they are successfully answering, or it will make recommendations, such as text to read, a video to watch, or an interactive to work with, if students are finding the current level too challenging. Why should I use it? We have over 150,000 questions with a variety of question types. Plus, when students submit their work, you as their teacher can see info such as the time they spent, their streak, and the level of questions. And finally, where can you find it? You can find it on the CK12 website through Concepts or the Adaptive Practice icon. There's also a free CK12 app available for all smartphones and tablets. The tool provides the ability for students to practice at their own pace on any electronic device using either a browser or the app, and they can do that in school, at home, on the bus, or on the way to a game. Like Katie just said, there are several different ways to access adaptive practice on our site, and I'm going to show you a couple of those ways during a live walkthrough in just a minute. But one easy shortcut, shortcut is to simply go to www.ck12.org practice. Our adaptive practice system is set up to challenge students to answer 10 questions correctly. Students will see this message at the top of their practice. It says, get in the game, get 10 answers to complete your practice goal. Our system meets students where they are. With three levels of questions, easy, medium, and hard, the system will match the student's level and will gradually increase or decrease difficulty depending on how students are performing. This means a student who is struggling may hit a goal of 10 correct with mostly easy questions, and a student who is more advanced would have more of a mix of levels. For teachers, this ensures that each student is progressively and appropriately challenged while maintaining a clear record of each student's level of understanding. Having questions that adapt to students' needs is awesome, but CK12 even takes it to the next level by making content recommendations in the moment. If a student is struggling, CK12 will intervene by recommending helpful resources like reads and videos. This is really the magic to the system. If you're teaching five classes a day with 30 students in each class, it is difficult to differentiate for all students in the moment. But our system does the heavy lifting for you and ensures that students are being appropriately challenged and supported. When you select practice for any concept, in this case, adding whole numbers, you're gonna see this main screen. When logged in with a teacher account, one of the first things you see at the top is the option to assign this to your class. Just keep that button in mind um, as it's gonna be relevant when we start talking about assignments. To the far right, you'll see the option to download practice as a worksheet. You can press that and get a print copy of the practice. The icon in between that says customize is gonna be discussed in more detail in the session customizing CK12 adaptive practice and assignments. You will always get a time estimate for how long our system thinks it will take a student to answer 10 questions correctly. And then at the bottom in the prepare before you practice section, notice how our intelligent system gives you an idea of how students perform on this practice after viewing this resource. So let's take a look at what students will see after they start to practice. Um, I've got a little diagram going here with some numbers. So the first one, number one, um, this is our navigation menu. And you can either press the back button to return to the previous screen, or you can select stop for now in the top right corner. The second thing is the progress bar. This displays the number of questions answered correctly. So what you have to remember about adaptive practice is that our system has already set the goal of getting 10 correct. This is a system requirement. It cannot be changed by the teacher or the student. Everybody is trying to get 10 correct. You will see the battery charger that will increase or decrease based on the student's streak. Sometimes it'll, it'll, it'll say three times or four times. It'll show if the student is getting several correct in a row. It will also turn red and decrease if the student has missed several in a row. We have all different types of questions that appear in practice. We have multiple choice, true, false, fill in the blank, and select all that apply. At the bottom, um, you can get a hint. Hints are available at the bottom left during practice for most of our concepts. 
There are a couple of ways to see more hints. You can either press the got it button that allows users to cycle through various hints, or there is an arrow button that pretty much does the same thing, lets them scroll through the different hints that are provided. There is a scratch pad available, which I'll demo in a second, that allows students to use their mouse or a stylus and write on the screen to solve a problem. And then lastly, there's an improve this question option. This gives our users a chance to report any issues they might have with a question or an answer that will go directly to the CK12 staff. So that's your general kind of lay of the land of, of what's happening with practice. So I'm going to steal the screen from Katie here, and I am going to um, go live to our site. So just a second. Okay, you guys should be seeing our CK12 homepage. Okay, so I said that you could access practice by going to the direct link of ck12.org slash practice, but I want to show you a couple of different ways to do this from our homepage. Just a few reminders about what you guys are looking at here. The CK12 icon at the top always takes you back to the homepage. As I scroll down, I can show all of the subjects that CK12 offers, and I could dive in here to our different branches and pick an individual concept there. Or I could also use the search bar at the top. I feel like our search bar is kind of a, sometimes an underutilized feature. We would love for you guys to get your students in the habit of coming to CK12 and searching for some of the things that they're learning in class. You know, Google can be a mixed bag of answers, but um, here you have curated, vetted content that your students can instantly access. So let's say I'm looking for a geometry concept like the midpoint formula. You can see that as I start typing in the search bar, it auto-populates some options. And when I select midpoint formula, I get search results. Is, that's a lot of search results. We have a lot of information um, on the midpoint formula that appears in different resources across our site. You can see on the left, I have the ability to filter in different ways. Um, if I knew that I was looking for a video or a real world activity, I could select some of these boxes and filter that way. Um, one thing that I like to do is I think our concept pages are very helpful. So this, this big box here that says concept, we've already highlighted that for you to draw your attention to this resource. When I click on that, I arrive at a CK12 content page. And here you're gonna see the various modalities or ways of learning that we're providing for students on this topic. We have reads, we have our interactive clicks, we have videos, activities, practice, and real world activities. So since we're talking about practice, again, for any of our concepts that you would search for, you're gonna see a practice modality. And if I open this up, it's gonna give me a little bit of a preview. I could select this preview button and start walking through the questions that my students are gonna see. But what I wanna show you is this assigned a class option on the side. When I press the orange assigned a class, it's gonna appear across our site on different modalities. I'm given an option of how I wanna assign this class. Um, a lot of you said that you are Google Classroom users and that's fantastic. You can see that we make it very easy for you to select either CK12 classes or Google Classroom. Today, I'm only talking about CK12 classes. Um, you'll, you'll see this Google Classroom option, but we have a different webinar scheduled for you Google Classroom users. But today, we wanna show everybody the advantages to using a free CK12 class to assign work. So from this assign button, I see that my title that I'm assigning is the midpoint formula. I can type in instructions, and then when I go to assign in CK12, I can see the different classes that have been set up and I can type in a due date and I can assign to my class. We'll look more into that here in a bit on assignments. Um, another way that I can browse, I'm gonna press the CK12 logo and go back to the homepage. If I scroll down, we have explore circles here. Um, I like using this as a good way to, to easily access our simulations, our clicks, our adaptive practice. And so if I go to browse adaptive practice this way, I land at the adaptive practice browse screen. If you're wondering what concepts have an associated adaptive practice, this is your screen. You can see that we have some things for grades one through five. We have comprehensive coverage for middle school math and science, high school math and science, and then we have some English spelling 
um, basic spelling questions for adaptive practice as well. Um, I'm going to pick on a physics concept for a moment. And if I go and select um, motion in two dimensions, I want to show you guys, you can see that I started my practice on this subject. In the far right, you should be seeing a percentage. There's 20% for gravitational force, 50% for projectile motion. What that's telling me is that in my account, I started doing practice questions on those concepts, but I never reached my 10 out of 10 correct. If I, if I got 10 out of 10 correct, it would say 100%. So here, I only answered two of 10 questions. That's why it says 20%. I only answered five of 10 questions. I can go back into this adaptive practice at any time and I could get myself up to 100% or I could even do more questions to get over 100%. So that's an option to do that at any time. But I'm gonna go back and let's look at a, a life science topic, something that I haven't done yet. Uh, let's see what's going on in plants. Um, if I select plant evolution, this is a practice that I have not completed yet. And so you can see that it's guessing that it's gonna take me about five minutes to get 10 questions correct. This is the window we looked at earlier where I could assign to class from this view. If I press that button, I've got the choice of my assigning to a CK12 class, am I assigning to a Google Classroom? I could download the worksheets. I've got some practice recommendations if I need to brush up before I start practice. And then once I start practicing, this is where we're going to see our questions and answers in my battery charger. So I'm not gonna do too much reading here. Um, you'll notice when I get an answer incorrect, we still give students a positive message. It says, check your work, then answer. Um, you know, something, something encouraging. When I get a question right, I got my one out of 10 so far on my progress bar, it turned green. We have fill in the blank questions. I'm guessing I'm gonna get this one wrong. All experts start as beginners. Again, we're still positive with this. If I start missing several questions in a row, think positive. Hopefully your students are gonna do a better job with practice than I am. Um, I just missed three questions in a row. And so this is the exciting part of our system that I was talking about. Of Instead of letting the student continue to randomly guess or just, you know, if they're genuinely struggling with getting correct answers, CK12 has popped up a recommendation window. I'm given a read, a video, and a real world activity in this situation. All three of those should help me get the information that I need in order to be more successful on this practice. So I could select any of those, brush up, come back to practice, or if I'm gonna ignore CKTL's recommendation, I do have the option to return to practice here as well. Um, so you can see my battery chargers, I don't have any streaks going and that's red because I just missed a lot. Um, so hopefully I would pick back up here and get questions correct. Um, a few additional things. Remember, we have some hints. So here's a hint that would help me answer this question. I have a scratch pad that might be useful, um, particularly in, you know, math classes. It's my great handwriting demo. Um, scratch pad's available. And then improve this question. It's just to give CK12 feedback on anything that's going on with those questions. Um, so that is hopefully the information you guys would need to get started with adaptive practice. So why don't we pause there for a minute and Katie's been keeping an eye on our Q&A window and let's see what we can clarify on adaptive practice for you all. Thanks, Lindsay. So right there, that Scratchpad, we had a question that came in um, about whether or not teachers can see Scratchpad notes. Um, the answer to that is no, that, that's not recorded in our system or turned in. Um, so if you did want to do that, I would just have your kids screenshot their notes for a scratch pad. Uh, but it's really just kind of a tool to help them take notes. And then almost like if you did it on paper and tossed it out on your way out the door. Um, we had another question that came in about the grade level or difficulty of the content practice questions determined. So when the questions are written to start, we put an estimated grade level on it. But once we start having students work with it, um, our system actually is intelligent enough that it starts readjusting that level based on how students are doing. Um, so it's really kind of a broader understanding of, is this a question that a lot of students have difficulty with, or is this a question that a lot of students get quickly and easily without any issue? Um, so that's kind of how that level happens as they work their way through. 
Um, we had another question about hints that came in. Um, and so that first question was, you know, do hints count against students if they use them or not? Um, the hints in adaptive practice are available there. Our practice is really kind of a mastery and understanding tool. Um, if you really wanted to assess students and um, not make sure that all students had the same questions and all students um, did or did not have access to hints, you could actually customize that practice into a quiz and then use that content um, in that kind of option. There is the option to turn hints off. So you would have control of that as a teacher. Um, and so it's not that they're counted against students as they practice, but if you wanted to customize it and turn it off, then you could do that piece. Um, so we have a couple more questions kind of in here right now that we'll see if we can get through. Um, we have a question about students being able to use this offline or do they have to be connected to the internet? Um, because our practice is adaptive, they would in fact have to be connected to the internet. We do have offline options for our flexbooks and our simulations for physics, um, but the practice we really, it, because of the way the system works, they would need to be connected. We would recommend them using you know, a phone or a tablet if they wanted to use it outside of a computer. The next series of questions, we have several people asking about what types of activities can be assigned. And that's going to be the part that we go into here in a minute to show you all the things that can be assigned. But yes, you're able to assign reads and videos and clicks and simulations and real world activities. So I'm going to give you a demonstration of that in a minute. And then we have some people asking about reports. And I'm also going to showcase for you reports of what you're able to see as a teacher, what the students see. Um, so that is coming up. Um, live as well. So it looks like we have a couple more questions kind of maybe that we'll answer right now and then we'll move on into what those particular resources are that you can assign. Um, so there we have a question about the system reading questions for younger grades. Um, at this point in time there isn't an audio component in there um, so that's something that you would want to um, kind of just take into account. We have talked about different options, so maybe you'll see that down the road, um, but at this point in time, that is not an option. Given the quantity of questions that are coming in about how, kind of what those resources are that you can assign, um, let's actually move forward into classes right now so we can talk about what the CK12 class looks like, um, and then we'll get kind of down the road in this webinar and talk more about those assignments. But feel free to keep populating that Q&A with questions um, and we'll continue to answer them live and via text. So with that, I'm gonna share my screen. And then we're gonna go into um, this first thing that I wanna show you guys is a video of one of our 2017 certified educators. This is Nathaniel Eugene. Lindsay and I actually had the pleasure of visiting his class this year. Um, and he regularly uses adaptive practice in kind of some innovative ways with his middle school math students. So we wanted to share that with you at this time. There are three big reasons that I really want them to be on CK12. The first thing I think is um, what it does, it, it allows them to improve, it allows them to extend the lesson that I'm teaching. So um, they could maybe um, build on skills that I can't cover in the classroom. And um, sometimes when they come to me, they have a lot of learning gaps. Um, CK12 allows them to um, focus on those skills that I can't touch on class. So I'm just 80 going to 1,000. Um, the question they're working on actually is slightly above grade level, but they're challenge, um, trying to challenge themselves. Um, so they're probably going to be just, for just a little while trying to figure it out, but um, that's one of the reasons I use it, so that um, our um, slightly higher kids can get an extra challenge. Another thing is it makes them very, um, very competitive, very um, motivated, and they tend to do better on standardized uh, testing when they are that motivated. When you send kids to the board, you actually get to see them struggle. Um, you see things that you really wouldn't notice if you were the one up front. So what I try to do is try to turn the class over to them so that it becomes more student-centered as opposed to just teacher-centered. That's 20 minus 36. And then you have, well, what's 20 minus 36? Well, Can you simplify 20 minus 36? Um, by them being able to access the Plix activities, the uh, flex books, the uh, videos, they choose the styles that they want to learn in. I think CK12 is very beneficial to me because when I don't understand a certain concept in the classroom, 
I usually just go look on Secret 12 and he puts the assignment up there so like he can make us understand and the first thing he always tells us to do is watch the videos and like use the reading to try to help us and that like that really helped me out learning like um, polynomials how to multiply them factoring them it makes them more independent of me and um, for me it's more than just standardized testing it's making them lifelong learners independent learners so they can actually go ahead of me and touch on topics that I haven't even co uh, covered yet because they have that, that confidence that I can learn it in the way that I want to learn it. So hopefully that gave you guys kind of one last just understanding of a different way to use the adaptive practice um, and with that I think we're going to move into classes. So with lots of different ways to learn on CK12, our CK12 classes help you manage assigned work and let you see student progress. Now I wanna reiterate again, we've had some questions about the advantages of CK12 classes versus Google Classroom versus other learning management systems. Um, I really recommend that you kind of, if you're using a learning management system for your class already, that you stick with that and you don't also create a CK12 class. Um, the only kind of added advantage to a CK12 class is that you could create a multi-concept assignment instead of creating you know, separate assignments for each modality type um, or including kind of each concept as you work your way through. Um, so that's one little piece for our classes. But other than that, um, especially with Google Classroom, the functionality for assigning, Lindsay will show you as we talk about assignments later today, and it's really just as simple. So if you're already using the classroom environment especially, um, then I highly recommend that you kind of stick with that and do all of your assignments in one versus kind of having assignments floating all over the place. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about CK12 classes. Um, so first of all, we used to call these groups. Um, and we've converted it to just call them CK12 classes as we streamlined them. They enable educators to share resources, host group discussions, make assignments, and see student progress, just like you would in another learning management system. But if you're not using one, this is a great option for you. So why should you use it? It allows you to set up a class discussion. You can share modalities with students easily on there, but you can also do that via URL or by assigning in an LMS. And you can track student progress. And then where do you get it? You can create and access CK12 classes through your dashboard or the icon at the top of any CK12 page. Okay, so I'm gonna steal the screen back again and go to the CK12 homepage. And so you guys are seeing my screen right now. Okay, um, somebody just put in the chat window that you, you don't want to start blending your learning management systems, that you kind of want to pick one and go with it. And I would like to echo that sentiment. So again, I'm going to show you what this classes button does at the top. But for you folks with a different learning management system at your school, you might choose a different option for assigning work. But this is available free to all of you. And there's definitely um, some advantages. I was just working with a homeschool teacher last week who this was the perfect solution for assigning work to her um, students, in this case, were her five children. And so she was able to set up a class for each. So uh, again, just depending on your situation, um, this might be the, the great solution for you. So when I selected classes, um, we're in a Jumpstart demo teacher account. This would say your teacher name. On your dashboard, you can either see some new content or over here, it's showing me that right now I have six classes and I don't have very many students in it. There's just 14 members right now in my six classes for this demo account. Um, when you guys log in for the first time, you might see a little video tutorial walkthrough from CK12 that helps onboard you. Um, or we've got some handy tips throughout. So a step for if I'm ready to come in and create a new class for my new school year, this plus sign button here, it's a great way to start. I've got the option to create a class or join a class. So I'm going to create a new class. And I get a, a, a pretty easy walkthrough window here that says start a new, create a new class, start a class to share resources, assign practice, and track progress. So if I'm teaching algebra two, um, and if I had five different class periods, I might set up an algebra two hour one class. And I could type in a description about that class here. I could select my subject where I'm gonna say, this is my algebra class. And you've got a couple of theme options. We're gonna make that this class green. And I'm gonna create a class. So here is the class that I just created. And we're trying to prompt you of, well, you've got a class, you probably wanna add some students. 
I can do it later always. I can come back to this classes menu option and access anything that I've set up. But when you're ready to add some students, you've got options for how you wanna do that. And it's whatever's easiest for you. If you are in a school where you have your students' email addresses, you might want to invite students by email. There's also a join code that's entered here that you can give to your students to have them join the class. So you could email all of your students if you wanted. Another option for adding students, if your students do not have email, you're welcome to set up a first name, a last name. If you want, you could use a last initial or it's optional, a unique username and a password. So you could go ahead and create accounts for your students. A third way is to find existing students. This is only if students are already in your system. If you have similar students to what you had last year, you could easily add them to your class. And then a fourth way, if you're dealing with large amounts of students and you need to, to have a little CK-12 assistance in uploading this, we've got a sheet here where you're basically you're sending us a spreadsheet following this format and then we'll help you bulk upload your students into your class. So four different options there. You're gonna pick the one that works best for you to add some students. Um, just something to wrap your head around is that if you're using a CK-12 class to make assignments, you can't assign different things to different students within the same class. So anytime I make an assignment for my Algebra 2 Hour 1 class, it's gonna to go to all the students in that class. If you're in a situation where, um, say within that Algebra 2 class, I actually have students who I've identified into two different groups, maybe one that's a more advanced group, one that's, that's more of a beginning group, and I'm not gonna put labels on them, I'm just gonna call them the, the yellow group and the, the orange group, you know, so that it's, so it's all positive in the class. I might wanna set those up as two different classes. I might actually have Algebra 2 Hour 1 yellow, Algebra 2 Hour 1 orange. Um, so I can make different assignments to those classes. So think about that as you're, as you're creating classes of how you want to um, break it down with the class structure. Um, I'm gonna go to back to classes and we've kind of pre-populated some work in a 2018 CEP grades, just to give you an overview of what this looks like. On the left menu option here, if I click on assignments, this is gonna show me what I've assigned this class of students. So you can see that I put a due date that's upcoming um, here in a week or so. You can see what I have assigned. I have a few assignments down here that I've yet to assign. You can always kind of build assignments and then actually put due dates on them later for your students if you would like. From this window option, there's all different places to assign work on CK12, but when I'm in classes, I can press this create an assignment button and I can search CK12 content here and make an assignment right from this window. So that's an option for you. I have different ways to sort my assignments, whatever is easiest for you to access. Reports, um, I'm gonna go through this more thoroughly in the last part of our webinar today, but just as a preview, there's only four students in this class, but I can see the assignments, I can see the students, and then when I click on these bars, I would actually get some um, data analytics reporting. So we'll talk about reports in a second. Um, another feature of classes that you can choose as a teacher is whether or not you want to enable a question and answer feature. So this could be great if you have that classroom culture where you want students to be able to answer, ask questions and you want students to be able to respond. Um, it cannot be great if you have the classroom culture where you're concerned about what students might be posting on an open form like this. So jumping down here in settings, in the settings option in classes, this is where you can, can, can control um, that Q&A setting. So you have the option to either, um, first of all, enable Q&A or not. You can just turn it off if you don't wanna have that in your class. Um, you can enable the option to let students post anonymously, which could be a comforting thing for students who are reluctant, or again, something that you don't want to enable if you're worried about who's gonna be posting anonymously. In the settings, you also control um, how students receive notifications, um, how often they're gonna get emails from you when you post things. You have the option to delete a class here, and again, some more information about class code and things like that. So that's under your settings. 
Otherwise, shared resources up here. This is where um, you as a teacher can share additional links, um, videos, things that maybe you don't want to assign, but you want to make available as a resource for your classes. And then members is just going to show you who's currently um, in that class. Okay, I think that was your quick walkthrough of CK12 classes for those of you who are going to use CK12 classes. Thanks, Lindsay. We had a couple of questions about the class code and how you can add stuff. So if you can just go back to settings for one second on that screen, um, you can directly share that class code at the top or even copy the link. If students are already signed into CK12, copy the link right below that. Um, and if they click on that and they're already logged into CK12, then it would automatically add them to that class. But you don't need to kind of invite them if you want to just share that code. So that's kind of the easy option for class codes as you're working your way through. Um, and then assignments, if you can just go back to the assignments page for a second. So we had a question about assignments and um, first of all, due dates. Our due date option is to put a date. There's not currently a time component on that, um, but you can add the date both within CK12 or straight to Google Classroom um, when you make that assignment but you um, can't kind of put the timestamp attached to that. Here, I'm within this particular class, so I can choose to assign content to this class. When we talk about assignments later and we go into those in more depth, we'll talk about how you can assign it to multiple classes at the same time, so you'll be able to see that piece. Um, and then we have a couple of questions about sharing resources. Um, so maybe you could go back to the Q&A for a second in there. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, so the shared resources within a class are set for the teacher to share class resources in there. So as a teacher, I could put in, I could share, you know, a text, the whole, maybe the whole textbook with my class that way or a video I want them to check out. Um, but if students want to share resources, they can always take any of the URLs from our site, their unique URLs, and paste them into a chat. And that might be a great way for them to share particular resources within a class option. Um, and then... When we do assignments, we're going to kind of keep the option of assigning pieces um, to the Google Classroom and various other pieces to the assignment section of this. So maybe with that, since most of these questions are about assignments, we're going to have Lindsay um, kind of jump in. Actually, I'm going to jump in. Let's take that back um, and steal my, your screen back and talk about assignments for a second. So. What are assignments? And this is relevant for both within CK12 as well as any learning management system. So just keep that in mind that all of these pieces are helpful and informational as we work our way through. So what can you assign? Teachers can assign practice. You can assign a customized practice, what we call a quiz, read, video, simulations, our Plix interactives, and even real world applications to your class within CK12 or to a Google class. Or if you're in a learning management system that we're integrated with, you can assign that within that learning management system. Why should you use it? Well, the advantage to creating assignments is A, to get kids to do that work, and B, to see how they're progressing and tailor your teaching accordingly. And then where can you get it? So assignments can be created and reports accessed on CK12 through any CK12 class. Um, you can create assignments on CK12 for Google Classroom as well. And then in other integrated learning management systems, you would do that within that LMS. So concept modalities, I kind of rattled off a whole list of them recently. So let's look at them for a little bit longer. So the first is our read. This would be a section in a textbook um, or a standalone read that's kind of teaching a lesson to students. You can see videos. So you'll see a variety of videos on our site that might be useful for students to access and learn about a concept. Our Plix interactives are these little quick interactions that students can work with. Simulations we currently have for physics and chemistry, um, and those are kind of more in-depth systems-based, really nicely designed and kind of all these different components interactives for students. Our practice or the customized practice in quizzes, and then our real-world applications. So all of these resources have a unique URL that you can always copy and paste. You can share that in a class. You can share that externally or you can use our little green share plane to do that within our system. But if you want to generate a report for your teachers and students to view, you're gonna to need to assign that content. So 
Please don't be intimidated by this chart. It's included in the session resource page that you can reference at any time. But to give you an idea of how things report in CK12 classes or preview it in an LMS, here's kind of what happens. In practice and quizzes, students are working towards a goal, 10 correct in adaptive practice or the full 100% in a quiz. For reads, videos, and our real world applications, you're simply asking them to read or watch that. And then our Plix Interactives and our simulations, we want students to work with and explore. The first two will give you a percentage of actual questions answered correctly, with the goal of 10 correct in adaptive practice or the whole in quizzes. The other ones are really learning modalities. So we give a check mark or no credit in CK12, and if you work in a learning management system and you set a score for that assignment, it would give them zero or the full score. So lots of kind of options. This is just a quick reference sheet. Um, but keep that in mind that really the ones that are going to give you that detailed percentage reports are the ones that actually are the questions in adaptive practice and quizzes. Okay, so let's take a look at um, how to assign a couple of things. These are just screenshots to show you here, but when you're assigning a read or a real world activity or a video, it, it looks pretty similar to this read right here. This is a read on the vowel A. And what you're looking for is this assign to class orange option um, right there. And I demoed this earlier for you, that if you press assign to class, it's going to pop up the option to assign through CK12 classes or through Google Classroom. And you would set the date and add instructions. So this is the same for a real world or a video. Um, up at the top, when you're in a read, you can also see that there's easy access um, to assign a practice as well. If you press that select button, it would give you the option to assign practice right there. We try to, we try to put it across our site just to make it really easy for you as the teacher to get this in the hands of students. If you are using a Plix, which are our um, kind of bite-sized interactives, they've got five questions, we've got an assigned class button at the top that's bright orange. You select that, you get the same pop-up window that asks you how you want to assign that to your class. This is the same if you are working with a simulation, that same orange button at the top, making it easy to assign. And so I, I, I think you're gonna find that button everywhere. Um, if you ever have any questions, you know, ask us, there's help centered support. But I think one thing that we do make very easy is for you to sign, find the assign button and um, start you know, figuring out how you want to organize your assignments with students. So now for reports. Uh, let's look at um, a report view. This is the view that I showed you earlier when I was in um, this 2018 CEP grades class. So across the top, um, horizontally, you see that I have an, it, it all depends on distance. That's a real world activity that I assigned. I assigned a simulation. I assigned a practice. That one is showing that I have assigned one concept. Um, for you guys who are assigning uh, or attending our customizing practice, customizing assignment session, we'll start talking about multi-assignments where you'll see that number go up. On the left, I have my students. We just used the last initial for privacy sake. So I could select a student and um, see a student report. And this is what you would see if you selected a student. So this is Kaylin M. And it's showing those same assignments that I saw horizontally on the last report, but it's showing me for Kaylin some more information of she turned in the, it all depends on distance, real world activity on July 9th. And so there's just a check mark there. On our real world activity, that's, that's a reading activity like our reads or our videos. All our system can really tell you is that the student accessed that resource. Um, so that's why you get a check mark. It's just your completion. So you, you, you'll find out, did a student at least attempt to open that resource that you gave them or not? That's what the check mark is. We can see for at the crossroads simulation that Kaylin hasn't even attempted this. Um, for our simulations, they would actually have to um, get to the sandbox area, manipulate um, a variable. They'd have to do something to be able to turn in their simulation. And she has not done that yet. For our practice, uh, like Katie was showing you in the chart, practice reports out as a percentage. So as you're learning, that 100% for practice means that Kaylin achieved 10 out of 10, um, or she, she got 10 correct on her adaptive practice, so it's reporting 100% for that. So that's an example of an individual student report. Um, now let's look at um, the detailed report. 
that pops up. This is what a student is going to see at the end of their adaptive practice. When they submit their adaptive practice, they get a screen that looks like this. You as the teacher can view it, the student can view it. There's no, there's no mystery there. So what we learn from looking at this detailed report is that um, the student 70% correct means they only answered seven correct questions out of the 10 our system set as the goal. So I can see there, seven correct, the best streak was two in a row. The time spent was three minutes. And the time spent, that's the most exciting thing that I, one of the most exciting reporting features is that it's crucial as a teacher that you have some idea of, you know, did a student answer seven questions, but they were, they were on the system for 40 minutes? Did they answer, you know, 10 questions, but they, they, they did it in a minute? Um, you get a really good idea of how much the student, how much energy the student's exerting with that time. Um, the skill level gives us an idea of how much they're mastering this based on the types of questions that they've answered and what their streak was and how many they've answered correct. It's a bit of an algorithm. And then we see the all questions. So I know that 11 questions were attempted and seven were answered correctly. And then I see the breakdown between how many of those were easy, medium, and hard. So after getting four out of four medium questions correct, looks like we moved on to hard questions and struggling a little bit more where only two of five hard questions were answered. So if you were to scroll down this, um, this screen, this report, you're then gonna see exactly what was answered correctly and incorrectly. You're gonna see the questions, you're gonna see the answers, you see the easy, medium, hard question, and these are always accessible for you as the teacher if you have assigned this to your students. The students can see it as well. So uh, if you're ever in a situation like a parent-teacher conference where the parents are saying, you know, what exactly is my student doing? What, what can you report of, tell me about the work? Um, you're welcome to have the CK12 screen up and you can walk them through how they're progressing in some of these different concepts and, you know, what kind of effort the student is putting in with a different time spent on our practice system. Uh, to show you what it looks like from a student perspective, uh, this we've now switched over to jumpstart student you see jumpstart student in the upper right hand corner so this is what a student would see if you've assigned work the latest assignments tab um, I see what's lined up for me I can see the due dates and I can start practicing from this area of my dashboard or open up these resources the next tab that's class activity uh, some of your students might be in many CK12 classes through different subjects and so I can see all of my class activity as a CK12 student and then the self-study tab at the end, um, students might be working on their own, things that aren't necessarily assigned to them by a teacher. So this dashboard can show them um, other things that they are working on as well. Um, one more note, when you are logged in as a student and you've received an assignment from a teacher, you're gonna need to turn in your work. So this is a read on the distance formula. And the student opened up, up this assignment and they did this reading, they would press turn in at the end. And at that point, it would trigger to alert CK12 classes that it's going to give you that check mark of that the student has turned that in. So you're going to see a turn in button on practice, you're going to see it for our different modalities, and that will trigger a score. So if you're ever in a situation where the student's like, I did it, why isn't, why isn't it showing a score? Why didn't it report? Um, you may need to remind them about this turn in button um, as a step that triggers that. Okay, so that's your walkthrough of reports. We're gonna go back to, to Katie to answer some Q&A on um, what you guys have been asking. So I think one of the biggest questions that's come up is, can I see these reports in a learning management system like Google Classroom or an LMS if I'm using them? Um, in most of the other learning management systems that we're integrated with, you, if you assign this content within that system or in the case of Google Classroom to that system, you will be able to access that report. Schoology right now has a percentage score or that full or no credit. Um, they don't currently allow for our full integration to see that entire report, but within Canvas, and if you assign to Google Classroom, you can actually access that entire report within that environment. So you would access that within Canvas if you assign content within Canvas, or you would access the same detailed report that Lindsay just showed you within Google Classroom. So once again, you don't also need to assign it within CK12 to see that report. You would be able to assign it to or within your learning management system and access the score as well as the detailed report there. We had a couple questions that came in about due dates and how does that work. 
Um, so our due dates, a student can still see the assignment afterwards. They'll see it completed or incomplete. Um, if they turn in their work before a due date, and then the due date passes and they do more work on that, or their score will be locked at whatever was turned in prior to that due date. Um, and however, if they haven't done that at all and they haven't turned in any assignment before that due date, then you'll see that score afterwards with a little late trigger on it. Um, and they can do that once. So the first time that that happens, you'll see that updated score once in there with a, this was turned in past the due date, they didn't turn any work beforehand. Um, but if they have turned in work beforehand, it will freeze their score at that due date. Um, so just be aware of that piece in there. We also had some questions that came in about kind of seeing it as a whole or seeing it as a parent, kind of what that works like. Um, as a parent, you could just have your student sign in and they get the same detailed report that a teacher would get. So you'd be able to access that and have them show you their work. Um, and then we are working on development for different resources to kind of give you more class insights as we talk about our next version of Flexbooks and different pieces like that. Um, so we know that that is not currently, there's not like a quick, how did all my students do on this? How much time did they spend on this? What did this look like at this point in time? Um, but we've heard you guys and we're looking into options for that. So I think with that, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap up um, some of the core content for this webinar and then Stan, I know we had one question about quizzes, which is kind of that next level question. So we're going to save that for after the core content's done. Um, and then if you have any other questions, feel free to populate that Q&A while I do some wrap up and we'll be sure to answer those before we sign off today. So, um, just a note, you can access our tools and apps page via ck12.org slash tools and apps or by going to the footer of any of our core CK12 pages. Um, this is a great resource for you guys um, because it includes information to our apps. So right now you'll see our Flexbook app, our Sims app, and our Practice app. If you're on a phone, the Sims is too small for a phone, so you'll just see our Flexbook and our Practice app within there. Um, but you can access those and then also find out more information about the integrations that we have with the learning management systems listed there, as well as with single sign-on options like Clever and Classlink. Um, so if you're still trying to figure out, okay, how does this work? What do I do with this? That's a great resource and tool for you to use. We also have some adaptive practice sessions coming up. So this one was kind of that basic introduction one. The next one in the series is customizing CK12 adaptive practice and assignments. As Lindsay mentioned, that would include pieces like customizing quizzes, creating new questions, using our math editor, and then multi-concept assignments and quizzes. I will stay on and answer a question about quizzes today, but definitely check that out if you're interested in taking it to the next level. Our first offering of that is actually tomorrow, so you can join us then. Um, and then we have some learning management systems. So if you are using Google Classroom, I recommend you join us later this week for that Google Classroom um, breakout session. They're scheduled to be about 30 minutes and just really drill down on what CK12 looks like um, to assign to Google Classroom and what it looks like within Google Classroom. The one on Canvas and Schoology is today and again next week, um, so it'll be very shortly. So if you're using Canvas or Schoology and want to understand a little bit more about how to set up that integration and assign content and see progress within those systems, we recommend you join us for those. Um, and then Google Class. So if you have not joined our Google Class yet, um, I can demo any of that if you have questions on that or you're having difficulty. Um, this is probably the latest join code. If you have a different one, not a problem. We had to create a second instance of the class because we had so many people sign up for this program this summer. Um, but if you're not in, you're welcome to use this code. If you use this code to join our Google Class and you get an invalid code message, then it's most likely that your school has blocked the ability to join classes outside your school domain. Um, and you can have your tech person whitelist the ck12.org domain within Google Classroom, or you can simply use a personal email address um, and then shoot us an email and let us know what that is. We're working our way through cross-referencing those and we'll get back to you and confirm that we have that so we can track any work across both pieces. Um, and we highly recommend you do that soon because those on-demand sessions that help you find all your resources and assignments and everything else for this program are in there, as well as those great session resource pages and assignments for the program. Speaking of resource pages, we do have a resource page getting started with CK12 Adaptive Practice and Assignments. You can find that within the Google Class environment. We also messaged that out earlier in the chat window today. Um, and that has that great chart reference as well as kind of a general overview of what's in there. Um, so check that out. Now, 
hopefully you guys are all planning on becoming certified this summer. So if that's the case, you're gonna to need to go into Google Classroom and click on the assignment. Once you fill out this form and click submit, as soon as you get a confirmation screen, you can simply open your assignment window and click mark as done. Um, and that will help you track what you've completed. We have this on our side as an answer to the Google form, but it doesn't automatically update your marked as done when you submit that. So just make sure you're doing that within there. And then just a reminder that we recommend doing these within about a week of your webinar. So everything is nice and fresh and you are good to go, but everything is due by the end of July in order for us to process all of our certifications this summer. We have a feedback form for you um, that we're using the same feedback form for the whole program and we hope you'll use it. We've gotten some great responses to help us as we continue to develop this program. So please take a minute and tell us what went well or what we can do better. Um, this is not mandatory. You are not required to fill out this feedback back form, but we do read and carefully consider all comments we receive as feedback. Um, it's available within Google Classroom under the topic feedback. So with that, thank you so much for joining us today. We're gonna, you're going to continue to be supported by our team at CK12, and we're happy to help you in any way. You can email us um, and then post on social networks, tell your friends what you're doing, know about CK12. Um, we've been getting more and more people joining each day based on some of that. Um, and as we said, we're going to stay on and answer some questions, but if you don't have any more questions, that is the end of our core content for today's webinar. Okay, well, let me switch over and share a screen so that I can um, actually show you guys some different pieces. We know we have some Google Classroom questions, so um, let's go ahead and share this Google Class. So within Google Classroom, if you are new to CK12, the CEP class, you just would click the plus sign and you click join class, and then you would post that code in here. So VN, click on that. VNH7F0. I can join. I'm actually already in this class, but if you type in the code, it should access that there. Um, but you can see it up in the top left of my dashboard kind of as it's joining that particular piece. So if you go within that class, and maybe we'll see if we can get that to load. Now that I'm in the Certified Educator Program, Today's content was getting started with CK12 Adaptive Practice. So what I recommend you do is go to that topic option, click on getting started with practice, and here you'll see all of the resources for this particular session. So we have kind of the description, some useful links, our links to our apps, so you can download them, some help center articles, and our great session resources, that last one right in there. You have an assignment. I was showing this the other day, so I marked this as done. I can open my assignment, Click on the link in the form to fill it out. So once I do that, and I fill out my form here, and once I submit this form at the bottom, then I'll get a confirmation screen. And you should also receive an email that gives you your answers and the ability to edit it. But once that's submitted, then I can go in here and I can just mark that as done. So if I click unsubmit, we'll go back for a second so you can see what it looks like. And you would just click mark is done as soon as you get your confirmation screen so that you know you are all set. We will track it on our end as well. And then the last piece there is, if I go back to getting started with that, I can scroll down and you'll see we have two more sessions. This is the one we just did. So within the next 24 hours, we will remove that join code and we'll post the recording of the webinar just like we did yesterday. Um, so you can access that as a reference as you continue to work your way through. Um, I, Let's see what other questions we have coming in here. Um, so I just answered that the recording of this webinar. Yes, that will be hosted tomorrow. Um, and I showed you guys where the marked is done was. Um, we had a question about joining um, kind of a future offering of this. If you were only able to join us for a few minutes today, um, then we recommend that you join us for the full webinar in the future. Um, we do expect you to kind of be in class for the majority of class in order to get credit for attending it. Um, if you, you know, cut out for a minute or two because your power went out, I saw that happen to someone and you're back, like, don't worry about that piece, but you should plan to be here for the majority of that hour webinar in order to get credit for it live. Um, if you are looking for a certificate and kind of you're joining us for multiple webinars, we will issue 
certificates and documentation and everything at the end of the program. Um, so you'll fill out that one final form and that will allow you to kind of request that certificate. We're not issuing separate certificates for each hour long webinar. We'll issue one with all of the hours combined from there. Yeah. If, if you have a reason, if you're not doing the full program and you have a reason to get an individual webinar certificate, then just email Jumpstart and we can take care of that. But if you're doing a whole program, you're going to get kind of that one piece at the end. So I would recommend not taking your time to get all of these little ones um, from there. So you'll just fill out that final form and then you'll get that certificate. Um, so I am going to take a question, um, kind of we've talked about some Google Classroom pieces and some program pieces. I'm going to take the question about quizzes because that's kind of the next level piece just as we go over here. If I go into CK12, um, and I go into my classes. So let's pick this particular one that we're working off of. And I go into assignments. So this is the one difference kind of within CK12 versus a learning management system is that when I create an assignment from within a class, the little quick assign to class option, um, assign single modality options, a read, a video, practice, et cetera, to your um, class, whether that's in CK12 or Google Classroom. Um, and similarly, you can assign one piece within um, a learning management system. If you're using CK12 classes, you can create an assignment and you could pull multiple concepts. So I could say I want a concept on time. Let's include this one and another one here maybe. And I could even add a quiz to this assignment. So this is a great option where you could say, I want you to do these different practice things and then take this one quiz. And what it will do is it pulled up all of the quizzes that I have created. Um, and you can tell that I have not done a good job labeling them with anything useful other than a date. Um, so when you make a quiz, I highly recommend you title it with something helpful. Um, and if you click on the info, it'll give you kind of a little bit of information on what that is and show you what you're looking at. There's a timer on this quiz, et cetera. Um, or I could create a new quiz and that would bump you to our editor. So if you're interested in kind of putting multi-concepts together or adding a quiz to that piece or even just generally creating a quiz and customizing practice, um, we're doing an entire hour webinar on that topic. Um, the first one is tomorrow and we have another one next week. So I recommend that you join us for that. Um, but then once you create quizzes, you could also just simply assign that quiz. So anything I customize or create will be found in my library. And I could filter and say, I want just my quizzes. And then whatever that is, I could open it up and I could assign that quiz directly to my students. I could assign it to my students in CK12 or I could assign it in Google Class. Once I connect to Google Class, I could kind of pick all my classes and put due dates there right off the bat. Um, or the same thing within CK12. And then I could assign that from my library within a learning management system like Canvas or Schoology. So kind of lots of options within there for classes and different pieces. Um, but if you're interested in customizing practice or making quizzes or doing multi-concept assignments, definitely join us for that customizing process. I think the, one of the last Actually, here's a question about quizzes. Um, with the quizzes, do you have quiz questions already made up that we can choose from, or do we write all the questions ourselves? So for quizzes, um, you can pull from our database of um, CK12 questions. So you can write your own. So this would be great if you're, you know, especially if you're not math, science, or spelling, um, you might want to be writing your own questions because we don't have those in our database already. But I can pull, if I look here, um, and I pull, this is a topic I put in my quiz, and these are all the CK12 questions that I included there. Um, I can pick and choose which ones I wanna use. This is actually a great quick reference for seeing what questions are available in a particular topic area, um, and that will help you understand what a student might have access to. Um, but you can write your own additionally, you could add your own question as you go. Um, Heather has a question while you're kind of in that area um, asking, can you pull a certain number of quiz questions from a pool that will be different for different students? So at this point in time, that would be kind of like taking a subset of our adaptive practice as opposed to creating your own customized quiz. Um, that is, I think, the single biggest request I have heard throughout the school year as we traveled. Um, and a couple of my colleagues kind of have heard the same thing. Can I sort of customized practice, but still get the adaptive component and pull from a subset. 
Um, we have passed that along to our dev team. Just a reminder, our entire team is about 35 people. Um, so we, it takes a little bit of time to kind of update stuff and think about how we could best incorporate that into our system. Um, but we have heard that at this time and we're gonna look into options for seeing what you might be able to do within that piece. Okay, it looks like we have answered anything in Q&A. So if there are any pending questions out there that you guys have, please email us at jumpstart at ck12.org. But for now, we're going to sign off and we hope to see you on a webinar later today or later this week. Thanks for joining us today.